gonna bury here to go on to face. Good evening and welcome back to another wonderful broadcast here on twitch.tv slash capitals. It is the Caps Gaming Showcase, this time the North American Edition, live here. Good evening and welcome. My name is Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin, and I'm happy to be joined back with you for another riveting 6v6 action here tonight. We have a barn burner for you in this best of three series between Prodigy and the Gabagoons. And I'll be joined shortly by two amazing talents here as we bring you this best of three action presented to you by Lidos. And of course, hosted and powered by League Gaming. It was a one-sided victory earlier today at the 2 p.m. matinee showing for those on this continent. Uh, those over the pond enjoyed an evening showing of EU action for the first time ever for Caps Gaming. Nevertheless, H-Reds walking out with the victory in two games and bringing us to where we are now, which is the first night, the opening week, and the beginning stages of this Swiss format eight-week regular season for the North American squads. We know them well. Their names are ageless. They are timeless as far as talent, longevity, and rivalries are concerned. But I'd be remiss if I didn't take this time right now to make sure I bring in my partner, my friend. It's King Lime, Tegan. Blair Tegan, how are you, my friend? We really do have some nice names on the score sheet. It's good to have you here, and I'm really excited for this because, quite frankly, Tegan, I mean, we're back in the saddle. It was only maybe six hours removed from the last time we were there, and now we're here, and we're calling some North American action, and man, what a great matchup we have tonight, right? Hey, we definitely do have a fantastic matchup. And there it is on your screen. Prodigy against the Gabagoons, a best of three. And, well, the Gabagoons are going to have a tough fight against this Prodigy team here, Nick. Yeah, they are. We know Prodigy quite well as far as uh, their longevity is with their championships, not only working their way up to sixes, and we'll talk about that story in a little bit, but a ton of gold for them under the 1v1 circuit, a lot of talent in the 3v3 side, and now they're really starting to chomp at their bit, aren't they, as far as sixes are concerned? Yeah, you know, they definitely have the hardware to, and to show it in the ones. And the fact that they've gone from ones to threes to sixes is just so impressive. And they are definitely holding it down on the sixes side. They really are. And we'll talk more about them in a little bit. Gabba Goons also couple of players over there, specifically in Jordan and Muted on the defensive side of the ice. But a lot of talent there as well. But... Maybe uh, not so known for some people that have been following the esports scene for a while, right? Yeah, no, definitely. It's uh, it's a few guys over on the Gabagoon side. You know, I know Magundas, but uh, you're exactly right in saying that, Nick. And I'm excited, very excited to see what's going to be held down. Yeah, me too. And, uh, you know, that's not all we have here. Obviously, we're going to have this best of three, but we have a, a third party to the coverage, don't we? Yeah, we definitely do. We've got the fantastic and stat-educated B-Major. Yeah, happy to be joining you guys. And this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I think everyone knows about Prodigy. They're one of the top teams, and not just in A, but really throughout the globe. They've won trophies. They've competed in finals and semifinals, and they really saw their ascendance from the one scene to the sixes scene really just this year in 2021. But Gabagoons is a team, they just started about a year ago at the same time that we saw that ascendance from Prodigy. They've kept a really good core with guys like JLP, Jordan, Magundas. They have kept a great core and a great nucleus of guys that have chemistry, have played together a while, and have actually improved their place in the standings with each tournament that they have played since they first got in to the 6 16. So I honestly think that this should be an interesting matchup for them. And Gabagoons could be a team we see a little bit more from as this tournament progresses. 
I totally agree, Major, and they are go only going up and up and up. And that's exactly what you want to do with a starting esports team. You open the door, you let some new people in, and you build yourself up. They got knocked out last time by Entourage, which is a pretty good name to get knocked out by. We'll see the chances they get moving forward. Am I right? Yeah, and despite getting knocked out, they still got to that point. And not only that, but... It was just in one of their first big tournaments. I mean, to come in and make a statement like that, compete with some of these top teams. Entourage has been one of the top teams, not just this year, but they've been one of the top teams for four or five years now. They are one of the staples of sixes in the NHL community, so there's no shame in that. I think Gabagoons knows what they want to do, and I think they're going to go out and really set a goal for themselves to not just make a run in this tournament, but to make a name for themselves, to put themselves into that upper elite core of NHL Sixes teams. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you look at the other side of things, Major, you've got Prodigy. Geimer winning the Leafs. You got Polgs who won Caps last year. You got Cad who we're not going to actually see tonight. Uh, we're going to actually see a replacement come in for him, but he's won. Boosh has won a couple years ago in Mini. The hardware over here is undeniable. Yeah, and similar to um, a lot of these guys on Prodigies, many probably know Booch from the versus and Hut side of things. He's a, been a very well-known player in the one side, but he's also had some success in the past in Sixes too. comes in with Prodigy. I think that it'll be a pretty seamless transition. You might lose that chemistry that you would normally have with Cad and Pauls, but nevertheless, Booch, one of the quality players, one of the more consistently good players in NHL Sixes. I expect him to fit in seamlessly and make a really good impact here for this Prodigy squad. Yeah, definitely. And then you've got Rampage in the back end for Prodigy as well. He's a very, very good goaltender. And he's only come in recently and he's fit in very nicely here, Major. Yeah, he's fitting great with this Prodigy team. And then you add that in with the talent he has in front of him, a team in Prodigy that not only is able to control the zone and score goals, but they play such a fast pace. It's really hard right. to be able to sustain that as an opposing team, the way they play, and then the chemistry that they all have together. Obviously, that chemistry shaken up in a sense tonight just with Cad out of the lineup and others. But still with Geimer and Desi in front of them, two staple defensemen that have played together for really a really the majority of the past three or four months here this prodigy team has been playing so i expect a really good game from rampage the guys in front of him i think will do a really great job as well making his job as easy as possible but do not underrate this gabagoon squad a lot of guys that have a lot of chemistry expect jlp and magundas to be very very active on the offensive side two guys that can create plays for each other jordan and muted on the breakout should be very good as well i think this will be a close Close matchup could maybe even see this one go into three games. Yeah, and the speed of Prodigy has to be known and watched out for. Um, as great stuff, Major, as I believe we've got ourselves a great game that's going to be coming up. Any predictions from yourself, my man? This one, I'm I'm going to go Prodigy 4-2 to two in this one, but do not be shocked if Gabagoons can maybe pull off an upset here. They're a really good team, and I think that they're really going to look to cement themselves into that top-tier teams. Do not be shocked if they pull a game out in this one, but I think Prodigy starts out with a 4-2 win here in Game 1. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they're going to have to be careful with the speed. Is Cat actually coming out? So maybe that will have a bit of a difference as we jump into our game number one like you said major it is a best of three so either team comes out and gets a couple wins that's all they need isn't it so uh, that's it prodigy we got to talk about they've come in uh their top four in five of their last eight tournaments major um winning two and uh coming in second in three as here we go major down to ice level for game number one as we'll catch up with nick great job guys thank you so much great job as always having you both be a part of this process this broadcast here as we are about to get underway i'm so excited for North American 6v6 hockey. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, Tegan Blair, it's King Lime. And this is the Caps Gaming Showcase here presented to you by Alitos and powered by League Gaming. You know the team's prodigy going north on your screen and those white jerseys going south on your screen will be the Gabagoons. And I know it's intentional. It still makes me feel better to say it each and every time. Puck drop 
has upon us. We had a quick stoppage, though flipping in and giving chase, which is a new strategy we're seeing more of in NHL 22, that flip and dump. The speed sometimes can benefit them to do that. And Desi, we know that name well. He's got it there. Back out to his D partner in Geimer. And still kept in. Geimer with the interception, trying to get bumped off the puck. McGundis will steal it, go back the other way. And Ethan's got it up the right side now in the zone. Here goes Gabagoons for their first attack of the game. Can they sustain the pressure and get a shot on? That's a chance. Good chance there. And saved away by Rampage behind the net. Two men down. Deflected off the skate. That was Booch who couldn't wrangle it in, but he was able to clear it off to the side through that deflection and flip back in the other way for Prodigy. Short board flip in. I like to see that as Ethan tried to recover it, and he will. He'll pick it up off the boards, and he's going against Pogues. We'll talk about Pogues more as these games progress, but it's back behind the Prodigy end. Five gone so far here in the first period. Prodigy back on the attack. Saucer pass intended for Bucci. He'll recover it anyway. Backhand chance off the iron in a good effort there. And Polo making that save. Pressure still on now for Prodigy. Back behind the net looking for another option. Shot in. Does not make its way through. And that one's going to relieve the pressure for now. Slowing things down is Jordan over to Muted. Up the right side now. Magundas back in. Pass intended for Ethan. Intercepted there by Geimer. Geimer looking for his D-man. Trailing behind him. He'll pick it up anyway off the board. And Butch will carry it out. Held along the boards now. Through center. Up through the blue line. Spinning around. And that's going to go offside. So a bit of action here with 11-12 to go in the first. A lot of action, I think, there, Nick. And uh, it's funny, uh, this morning, we got to see so much puck movement on the arrow side. Not one dump in. Just in this first nine minutes, we've already seen two. And that's the difference in play style for me, UDNA. Play carried along now. Four Gabagoons in the zone, muted. Shot in, bounced off Booch, taken up over the blue line and cleared. Prodigy making light work of these attacks here, keeping things at bay. Shots might get on, but they'll be deflected. Pogues with a nice pass. That was intended for Sazi. He got one on, and a good shot there, staved away by Polo. Keeping things in the zone now. Muted, slowing it down again. And that's going to be what Gabagoons, I think, needs to do, Lime, is get the puck, slow down, reset, and then start their way out. Yeah, because Prodigy's so quick with it, right, Nick? They're very speedy. You see them coming into the zone here with speed. They do everything quickly as they throw that one in front. You're right. Gabagoons need to play their game, slow things down. Booch behind the net looking for his wing man on the right side in Sazi. As we said, no CAD playing. So a bit of an interesting shakeup might play to the benefit of the team in white. Right now, Magundis, though, fighting off in the corner. Good effort there with a couple of stick lifts that ended up netting. The man in yellow, that's Desi with the puck, and he's got it on the attacking end, but not for long. That one's fought along the boards on the right-hand side. Poke checks will be exchanged. Sazi's got it. Wrist shot on. Polo almost lost it through the screen, but he'll make the save. Yeah, that was a good save. He had to be sharp there as you saw him holding on to it as there was a bit of a screen. Prodigy, very good in the offensive zone face-offs. We'll see what we get a taste of first here, Nick. Face-off on the right side. That one was won by Prodigy, but shot really didn't go anywhere. Quick counterattack, JLP with speed. That's loose in front slot area. That one's luckily kept away at bay, and Booch will pass it almost to himself. Sazi's got it instead out now. Desi, Desi, center point now for his left D man in Geimer. He'll pass it essentially to himself, whether that be intended or not. And that was hopped out to center, and we'll get our first penalty of the game, and interference call will be assessed. Yeah, and Gimes is actually going to go sit for two. I didn't even see the interference call. He must have had a bump behind the play, but a strong power play opportunity at the end of the period here for Gabagoons. Gabagoons can use this to take advantage of the opportunity and get one in as the, I guess, underdog on paper. But we'll see if they can get something going on this man advantage. Cycling good so far. One-time shot coming in from the left. Rampage. Saw it all the way. Not a great angle, but a good shot attempt there by Gabagoons. Yeah, but it's good. It gets uh, it gets Rampage moving, and that's what they need. They throw a quick give and go with the slap shot. It's a good start, and they still have a minute left here in the power play. Face off to the left of Rampage. 154 here in the first period. No score so far. A stark difference than our first broadcast earlier today where we've seen four or five goals so far. Prodigy will clear that out. Under 100 seconds left in this opening frame. Of the opening night, Caps Gaming Showcase here on twitch.tv slash capitals. Poke checks will meet. Puck will trickle back behind the net. And still in the zone. 
Gabagoon's looking for the centering feed. That's kept in by Jordan. I like to see that. Ethan's got it back down low. Geimer's out looking to make up room on the play. He's there, but not in time as Ethan will take advantage of Geimer racing back and he'll get the opening goal of the night. And that's a little bit of a defensive lapse there by Prodigy. I think they chose to come out of the uh, PK setup a little too soon. As you saw, Geimer, just like you said, Nick, he was rushing back, trying to get there. And guess what? It's that little give and go play again with the slap shot, catches Horn moving, and they get themselves a goal. It's a one nothing matchup, and it's very... Uh, a very good goal to get at the end of the period. You never want to give up a goal in the first or last minute of a period that happened there on Prodigy. And as time winds down, Gabagoons will take the one nothing lead. And I guess the angle of the shot wasn't the problem. It was getting room there. They did so. And they go into the locker room at the end of one, one nothing. Yeah, they got to be happy with that. Ethan with the big one team. You love that play. Uh, Major, what did you think about those two quick give and goes? The fir first one ending up in a save. Second one, a great goal. Yeah, and it's plays like that that I think Gabagoons is really going to want to try to look for. They've actually done a really good job maintaining offensive pressure in this game. Obviously, the power play does help that a little bit. As you can see, the time on attack, not a huge difference. Just 50 seconds shot. Prodigy's four, Prodigy 4, Gabagoon's 3. So Gabagoon's keeping up with Prodigy, really going stride to stride with him. I think Prodigy will look to kind of put on the pressure a little bit more. Obviously, that give and go is a good play there from JLP to Ethan. Gabagoon takes advantage, but would not be surprised if Prodigy would go in and score here and look to score quick into the second period to tie things up and get it on level terms. one nothing walking into the second period here. We'll see if Gabagoons can take advantage of that momentum boost that they'll get in the final minutes uh, or final seconds of that period number one as the power play did end, but technically that was still a power play opportunity. Geimer wasn't all the way back. He's back now. They'll switch up D-men. Desi will have that one bounce off of his body. And Prodigy will come up the left side. Polgs. Caps Gaming 1v1 Invitational winner there, and he puts one home with a nice little hut move there, the spin rooney We love to see that from the one-time champ there for Caps Gaming, and now we're back tied. Yeah, that is just a show of his own skill. What an individual effort. You see the X Factor, the unstoppable force, and that's what Polgs is. He comes in, takes it in, and just moves his way through. What a far side goal by him. And we got ourselves a 1-1 hockey game here, Nick. And I love that you brought that up for our new viewers that are watching NHL 22, maybe eSports for a first time, especially in the new game. Those X Factors really can make a difference, can't they, Lime? It definitely can. And you see Polgs, who is used to playing a small, speedy build. I talked about that before. And look at him using a power forward, unstoppable force. It can change a player's game, and it has here tonight. And we've seen a goal from it. 1-1 now. 15 minutes left in the second frame of this contest. Best of three. As Polgs will try to bring it in again. Shot in there by Booch. Booch holding on, wrapping around the boards, trying to get over to Desi. Couldn't get back there in time. He'll go back the entire length of the ice to pick it back up. Slap shot in front, though. Omaha chance. Polgs might have it on his stick. And he's got it. And he's got the goal. We barely yeah. saw it coming off that. We'll look at the replay here as the camera could not keep up with the speed of Polgs. He's got that one in. And this is 2-1 to one real quick. Here's the replay as Polgs comes down, takes it on the forehand, nice and easy. Polo, he kind of got caught puck watching there where maybe he should have been watching where Polgs' body was. Fantastic goal, and just like that, at the flip of a hat, we've got ourselves a 2-1 hockey game prodigy. We talked about this at the end of our broadcast earlier this afternoon in that the motions of teams and the motions of players that you expect, well, if you're used to those motions and they do something different, it really throws you out of your game. Desi, instead of just taking it back and resetting, slap shotted it up the ice. Pogues must have called that out in the party chat. And here we go. It's now a 2-1 game. This time, a one-goal lead for Prodigy. So they're two goals scored within just a couple of in-game minutes. Ethan's got it on his stick, though. Way out of his net there was Rampage, but he makes the save. Trickle through behind him, but no, it won't cross the red line. And we will get a whistle is you got to be so careful as a goalie in 22 is the amount of goals I've seen scored behind the goal line is uncanning. Good job by Rampage to watch the puck there and get it squeezed up. 
Off the face-off, deflected, and he scores! Magundis with the momentum, the push, and the fight to tie this one back at two, assisted by Ethan. We've got a brand new game. And just like that, great answer by the Gabba Goons, Nick, is that's what they need against this Prodigy team. If you let this Prodigy team get away from you, it's going to get ugly. But a good job by the Gabba Goons to come back with a great answer. And we're halfway way through a hockey game, and it's a fire one at that. Halfway through, still tied now. So four goals, two aside, halfway through game number one. So it's like a brand new game, just shortened. A bit as we go offside that's, there. That's right, Nick. As my old coach used to say, if we would have known, we could have started here. I think our one-liners are better than some of the ones in previous uh, renditions of sports games. I like ours better. We're going to keep rolling with those as we Love continue it. on here. King Lime, B Major, and F5 Penguin on the call here for our opening night here at the Caps Gaming Showcase. So excited to be back with you. Nice to be here. Glad you're there. And right now, Muted sends that up right there for JLP. He'll continue it on to Jordan. Back to JLP on the give and go at the blue line. Odd man rush back the other way. Three on two if they can hurry. That's Polds with a shot and that'll just whistle just wide. Booch has it behind the net. Now Polds over out Geimer. Geimer holding, circling. He'll get that one poked free. Recovered off the boards and wrap it around for Sazi. sazi has got it. Tried to pick it up and that's Desi keeping it in. No, he will. Great keep in, but just couldn't get it to his teammate. As that one's intercepted and brought down the other way. Poke deck to free. Saucer pass through. That one can't get there. Uh, Errant Stickliff almost drew a penalty there on Jordan. But he'll keep it. Bring it back and try to reset his team out. Magundis with a hot stick there on the turnaround play. As he's tied this one up for his team from Ethan. Looking to get his team back ahead for another lead change. That'll be our third one in the game so far. Under three to play now here in the second period. Geimer will carry it along the red line. Stopping, resetting, finding his lane, he'll find it. That's Booch over to Polgs. Polgs, he just hit a lot of traffic in front there as the collapsing defense from Gabagoons is keeping this game tied so far. Bucci will reset that one, the centerman for his squad. Out to the D-man, up left side, Polgs. Polgs stops, turns, Booch, Rashad on score! In front from the hash marks, the patience rang true. And another goal here for Prodigy makes this one 3-2. to two. I'm not sure if the pass purposely got there from Polgs, but nonetheless, what a shot there by Boosh. And it actually looked like Polo got a save of it, but it, or a save of it, a piece of it, but it just wasn't enough, Nick. And so close to that last minute, we've seen a goal in the last minute of the first and now the last minute of the second. Those last-minute goals can absolutely deflate a team's momentum. You think you've played this well. You got back into it. You fought off two goals. You tied it, and then you give up the goal. Let's see what they can do here. Last-minute effort for Ethan. Ethan tried the backhand still there in front, but unfortunately, Geimer's poke check will push that one aside, and we will go into the locker room with another lead change. This time for Prodigy, it's 3-2. to two. And uh, what a great job by Polgs to kind of pick up the boys. The captain of the Prodigy team really showed up here in the second period. Uh, Major, what a great job here by Prodigy to come back and change that lead up. Yeah, and we said it coming into this period that Prodigy would probably really look to score quick into that second period and get the momentum on their side. They did that, then followed it up with another one, but Gabagoons coming in and scoring with a nicely coordinated response. They're keeping up with Prodigy stride to stride, but something I just want to say real quick, someone's this name hasn't been mentioned a lot, Desi. He has three assists on each of these goals so far. He has really been generating from the back end for Prodigy. It'll be really interesting to see if they can coordinate another one to get that extra cushion or if Gabagoons can coordinate another response and get themselves back in a tie game here in the third. Third period about to get underway. And man, we've got a great game so far. So far for you. Say that three times fast. As mommy no. made me mash my M&Ms, and here we are. As all four members of Prodigy were chomping at the bit on the blue line to get this thing moving, but that one didn't get through. Ethan will take it back the other way. He'll scale that one along the boards over for Muted. Muted back down low. Trying to pick that one up was, and he's got it now, JLP. Back to Ethan. 
We have a scoreline update there on your right-hand side. Some of the great features here at League Gaming are these score updates that you'll see on your screen in front of you just to keep you abreast of what's happening around the league. And I promise you, with this Swiss format, that will become more important later on line as those scores will kind of dictate those records moving up and down the ladder. You kind of want to keep your eye on who keeps moving up into the 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, right? That's exactly right. And that's the best thing about Wii Gaming is they're not only giving you an opportunity to play at the highest level, you're able to watch and be a true GM and get the feel of a real-life action. 15.35 to go here in the third period, and oh my goodness, a mishap of a play, a bounce or a deflection. Magundas will get credited for the goal. However, that one bounced off of what looks like Geimer's stick, and we are back tied. And Magundas, great job by him. I know he's a big part of the Gabagoons. And is he ever showing that right now? The left winger showing up in this. He's got himself a couple of goals here. And they're super important as we dive into 3-3 now with 15 to go in the third, Nick. And those X-Factors going to work yet again. As that might have benefited the man there as a poke check off of Desi's stick. Finds Rampage's glove. We'll get a whistle. These hops are dangerous off these backboards right now for uh, for Prodigy. Yeah, the boards are very hot, so to speak, and and so is this hockey game. As the lead changes have been phenomenal, you just don't know who's going to get the next one here, and it's exciting to see, Nick. It really is. As all five men back up the trap now for Gabagoons, as they feel confident they can push the envelope and the needle on this one. Let's see what happens in the. Middle stages of the third period as Geimer's going to carry that one up. He'll get rubbed off the puck. And Jordan will recover it for his team. Left side now muted. Left side going down on your screen, that is. As that is the right D-man on the left side of your screen that you're watching here on twitch.tv slash capitals. Flipped in. No speed there. That should be Geimer getting it. He will. And he'll bring it along through the blue line. Good little pass there up. Sazi off the bank on geometry. Favoring mathematics here is Prodigy. He'll swing that one around. Aimed for up Bucci. Now Polks behind the net. Wrist shot. Deflected aside. Pushed off by Polo. Who's looked pretty great so far on the chances he's got. As we're behind the net now. Gabagoons. Back through the middle. Center point. Shot in. Pushed off by Rampage. Rampage will make that save 99 times out of 100. He's looked great as well. A battle of the shooters, not so much the goalies. In the third period here, tied up now at three. As that one's behind the net, picked up now. Four Gabagoons as they'll move it down the ice. Poke check free, still with it. Magundas around for Ethan. Wrist shot off the iron. And that time Rampage stayed with him, not biting on that angle shot. Fourth or fifth attempt, he's made that shot there, Lime. So he's not biting it right now. Yeah, we'll see uh, if he keeps holding on there. He's watched Polo get beat by Boosh, and he definitely doesn't want to do that with five minutes to go here in the third period, Nick. In this best of three, you got to win two. Let's see which team will come out. We must have a winner. That's the coolest thing about 6v6. No ties here. We're not having any of it. A couple of sticks meet up there. Shots were ringing on to net. One got on. That was saved by Polo. And carried out now by Jordan. He'll swing it around back. Send it up for Magundas. They've been giving and going the entire game. It's worked so far as that bank pass finds Magundas. Poked free by Desi. Desi, the nice utility man. The all-star, I think. Uh, an unsung hero, as B Major was mentioning for Prodigy. So he'll bring it around for Polks. With some speed. Wrist shot there. Just not a lot of room in front of him. Saved by Polo. Under a minute now. Real time in it to conclude this. Could this be the tiebreaker? Over. Oh, and that was intended for Sazi, but he couldn't get the shot on. Two on two back the other way. Four checking back now. Is Gabagoons. They were putting some pressure on there. As the back check from Booch was looming. This one's in now. On the blue line. Carried back out. That'll exit the zone. They'll have to bring it back. Half minute left here in regulation time. Pushed along left side boards now. Up for Booch. 
Booch can't wrangle that one in or corral it for a shot. And we'll see what this last possible rush for Gabagoons will net as Olympia beats Wicked 9-1 in the final for the 9 p.m. game. Rebound there. Good chance. Cleaned up nicely. The garbage picked up by Gabagoons. Five seconds to go. Pushed up in front for Magundas. Let's see what Pogues can do. He'll push that over to the boards. And we're going to go to overtime. But before we go over to overtime, man, what a great save. And then a pickup by the defensive Gabagoons to keep this thing tied and go to OT instead of giving up that goal at the last possible second line. That was very close there, Nick. And what an exciting end of hockey we had there with the last eight minutes basically going unstopped there. I tip my cap to you as that was a very massive to call. Major, what did you think of that third period, buddy? That was honestly a really good third period from both sides. Really, both Prodigy and Gabagoons had really, really good chances to possibly take this game home. And we said that this was going to be an interesting series. It doesn't get more even than 10 shots on 10 shots, three goals on three goals. These two teams have been at each other from start to finish. This overtime should be very, very interesting. Don't be surprised if the overtime winner comes from a rebound or something really close up front to the net. A lot of chances have been generated there from both sides. Overtime upon us. Bonus hockey here in the second broadcast of the day for the Caps Gaming Showcase. Presented to you by Lighthouse and hosted and powered by League Gaming. We'll get a winner here, whether it be 1-2 or an umpteen amount of frames. It would not be 6v6 North American Hockey if we did not get overtime. And we'll have that here for you. The next goal will win this in sudden death. Wrist shot there. Whistles wide. Rampage sees that one past his right side. Still in the zone. No, it'll exit. Jordan take it all the way back into his end. He'll dodge an attacker there and send it in for the rush. That one's intercepted, though. Polgs will pick that up and bring it back the other way. Flipped in now for Sazi. Can he get there? He'll fight it along the boards, but he won't be able to come up with it. That'll pass the center line, and this time Geimer will slow things down. Good job by Boosh to get his hand on the puck there in the neutral zone as it has really been all gobagoons lately. Pressure certainly mounting. Can Prodigy recover here as he's being accosted by poke checks across the board? And now we've got an on-man break. Going back the other way. Two on one. Back checkers coming. Ethan still got it. Centering pass back to Ethan and he scores! Ethan with the overtime winner. Back to his stick off the rebound. And Gabagoons will take this one in overtime. Four to three. And it only took six minutes in a broken play that ended up on the stick of Ethan, and he makes no mistake in front. I don't know if Rampage was able to follow the puck there, Nick, but that's a great goal by Ethan. And to go up one nothing on a team like Prodigy in the start of a series is absolutely massive, isn't it, Major? Absolutely massive in so many ways, not only to get that one to nothing jump, but to start your season. Remember, Gabagoon's a team that wants to come in and really cement themselves into that top tier of teams. We were talking about that earlier. To beat a team like Prodigy that has won championships, been to multiple finals, a, a, an accomplished and established team like Prodigy. When you think of Prodigy, you think of them in that top tier of the entourages and the composures and the vertigos of the world. Prodigy is in that tier to go and not only beat a team like that, but to play par to par with them really for all 65 plus minutes that this game was played, really making a statement here for not just this series, but for the tournament going forward. Gabagoons making their name known with a huge 4-3 overtime win. Yeah, they wanted to make an impression, and that's what we talked about, Mages, them coming out and taking this tournament by storm, and that's what they've done in Game 1, and one more game win is going to take them through this best of three, my friend. Yeah, and obviously Gabagoon's happy to get that one nothing lead, but one game, not enough to give you a 1-0 record, obviously best of three. So they're still going to have to take care of business one more time, and I think everyone here who knows Prodigy knows they are not going to take that lying down. I would not be surprised at all if they come out just as aggressive, if not more aggressive than they were there in the last three periods that we saw them. But absolutely huge for Gabagoon's. Now we see how they respond, if they can carry that over here to Game 2 to finish this thing out against an elite prodigy team.
Now, being the amazing analyst that you are, I've got a couple questions for you regarding that game. Do you think CAD not being there was a problem for Prodigy? I mean, it definitely can affect some things. I mean, you have to remember, Polds and CAD, they have been tied to the hip as line mates on that forward line. So not even just from a skills per perspective, we know Booch and we know that this Prodigy team has the talent to compete with anyone that they want to in this tournament. But the chemistry there, when you look at that compared to JLP and Magundas who have played together for a long time now and Ethan as well, and then Jordan and Muted have chemistry together. So a lot of chemistry that they're playing on that Gabagoon side, maybe having to make those last minute changes did affect a few things, but I do believe that things maybe get adjusted a little bit on the Prodigy side. They come in, they play aggressive. And I think that they will look to make up for that loss. But Gabagoons, if they play the way that they did in that game, we might be seeing a lot more of them, not just in game two or potentially game three, but for the next few months as this tournament rolls on. Well, we noticed that Sazzy actually finished that game with zero points in CAD's position. So that was the reasoning behind that question. Obviously, CAD being very missed on that lineup. And when you look at the distribution of points on the side of Gabagoons, just like you said, awesome chemistry. They're all on the board. Yeah, everyone on the board. I mean, you see Ethan with two goals, Magundas with two goals, um, Jordan with an assist at the right D spot, at the right the left D spot, excuse me, and then JLP with the two assists, um, both on plays that he made from that center position, getting it over to Magundas and making that one-time play at the first play of the game and then the third goal as well to tie this thing up. But maybe that could have a little bit of an effect. Obviously, Desi on the right side, but Prodigy with three assists. Lots of his assists going two pulks, two of them for that matter. So maybe as this game goes on, they adjust a little bit. It'll be very interesting to see how Prodigy responds in game two to make a game three happen. Great stuff, guys. And we're back here. Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin, alongside Tegan Blair. It's King Lime. And, of course, Mr. Bigsby himself in B major. one nothing is the series right now. That's Gabagoons with the... Probable upset there with an amazing overtime winner. And now, game number two underway here. Prodigy going to be in the dark blue jerseys going north on your screen. Gabagoons in the whites with the black trim going south on your screen. Magundas will steal that one. Over for Jordan now. Back for Muted. And they'll try to get this thing out of the zone as best as they can. Centering feed there, still kept in by Geimer. <clears throat> it's interesting to see Desi come in and make two massive hits. Maybe he's trying to get the boys fired up early here, Nick. Got to get the momentum swinging one way or the other, and good point out there in Sazi not getting any points there in absence of Cad in game number one. So we'll see how that shakes out. See if we can get him activated more. Had a lot of touches, just could not generate the offense off his stick going the other way. So... Here we are. Booch, right. now Polks, deflected in front. That was a great effort, but Polo able to push it aside. That one hits off of a stick that was on the ice. That one was dropped at some way, shape, or form and did error and change the trajectory of the puck. Mathematics not working for Gabagoons on that one, despite the amazing bank passes that generated the offense there at the end of game number one. Here we are now, though, shot there. It's Jordan instead, and that one will exit the zone. And Desi being accosted, he'll carry that through center. Over up now, Pogs. He'll lose it. And that, oh, I thought that was going to be a delayed penalty on a possible trip, but no. Gabagoons, play will continue. They'll try to pick that up at the blue line. That was Geimer trying to intercept the puck. Can't get it off the hands of two Gabagoons forwards. Instead, we turn it back around. 9.30 to go here in the first period. No score here with you in game number two of this best of three. As we got the D-men slowing things down, a pass there intended up for Ethan. No icing will be the call. It must have bounced off of a player or the ref said, no, thank you. Play will move on and it will. Another minute gone now as the updates. New Jersey Devils Gaming Club taking one over the kicking chickens, baby. And making this one one nothing for New Jersey. Love to see the New Jersey Gaming Club, uh, New Jersey Devils Gaming Club make something happen. Uh, it took them a while to get started here, Lime, but nevertheless, they're starting to put together a nice squad up there in Jersey. 
Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, NJ Devil's got a pretty big head. I think he's got a pretty massive brain in there. He can put together some awesome stuff. It's great to see uh, the NHL teams in other NHL tournaments and supporting the cause. Uh, you know, we tip our caps uh, to the Devils over there. Stick taps all around, indeed. When every team can bring a team, that's when I'll be the happiest penguin on the planet. Outstretch stick there to keep McGunnis at bay, but instead we'll get a penalty probably for that interference is the call. And right now, Gabagoons will go on the power play. And I'd almost say that's the F5 turning point in last game was that early penalty where Eason scored. Let's see if they can capitalize at the start of this period. I think you just started a nice little segment in the refreshing turning point. We'll have to coin that one up and make that a thing. But right now, we have a man advantage here for Gabagoons as they got about a minute 20 left here to generate something offensively. But Prodigy suffocating that for right now as Pogues will take it down the ice. Muted will take it back. Ethan's got some speed, though. On the breakaway, back is Desi. Desi, good interception there to break that play up as Ethan was streaking down the ice, keeping that one away from his goalie rampage right now. Down behind the net, 25 to go on the man advantage. And that'll exit the zone. Prodigy trying to go back in real quick here. If they can, they will. They're in. Ethan, can he get there? He can. Geimer's going to come out. Can he get here in time to not give up the goal like he did last time? And he will. He's in front of Ethan and stood there making sure Ethan could not get that puck, Tegan. Yeah, he wanted to make sure. And if you actually notice, Polds didn't leave until Geimer was back there holding Ethan's hand. So uh, very knowledgeable play by both these guys in adapting. Good trade-off there. A better showing of team chemistry. And those are the things you don't see as that one goes off the iron as Booch rang one just past Polo, but also just hit the post and did not get in the back of the net. He was looking for one there. Final 10 seconds as Prodigy will take this one back over center. Up left side, Polk. So stretch passes work. Centering in front, chance! And at the buzzer, Geimer almost puts one home, but no. Polo makes the save, and we go into the locker room. What a save by Polo. Uh, great job by him. The Polg's really stepping up to try and uh, get his boys going as well as Desi. Uh, what do you think, Major? Yeah, and like you said there with Polo, he made a few underrated saves there in that last game. Obviously, with a lot of the scoring and the action going on with the five players on each side, you didn't really get to see a whole lot of Polo making big term plays. But realistically, it's one of those things to where you have to go in and, I mean, you have to make a save in those positions, and, and Polo <laughs> did that. So I, I think you'll see a lot more action here in the second period. Only two shots between the two teams, interestingly enough. Gabagoons will look to do a little bit more what they did in the first few periods. Didn't get to really enforce their game there in that first period. Look for them to attack a lot more, but you have to credit Prodigy's defensive prowess to a part of that reasoning. I got to say, guys, I was muted, but I know you heard it. The broadcast didn't hear it. I saw the replay of that save, and I about got giddy. Uh, my goodness, that save looked better in replay. As Polms tries to go back again, and this time he secures. Booch will score, and this finally breaks open the tie. It's 1-0 for Prodigy. Thing, something you don't want to do is upset these boys and I think uh, I, when I saw Polgs come into the chat there and say dude I knew that they were going to get fired up and they come out hot here and watch out as these boys are expected to pour it on when they're playing like this. Even Rampage giving the stick tap there to the gross save he said that Polo showed up with uh, to wrap out that period but this time Booch beat him as we go offside here. Uh, you know, I was saying right before we that, that flurry happened at the end of the period, those little things aren't noticed. They don't go on the stat sheet there, Lime, in the fact that Ethan will, you know, wait for, or sorry, Pogues will wait by Ethan until Geimer gets back there. Those are the intangibles right. that you can't measure, but they do change the course of a game. It's the game within the game, Nick. You know I say that all the time, and I love it. Uh, there's multiple different games within a hockey game, and that's one of them is uh, just being very supportive to your D-man. Everybody supports each other and is on the defensive side of the puck. You win hockey games. That one's flipped along, intended for Magundas. He'll get there after a fight off the boards from Desi. Slapshot in, hits his own teammate in JLP. 
who's got two assists on the night so far. That shot will hit Rampage in the breadbasket and will hang on for a draw. Great save by Rampage, and he's going to want to keep himself sharp here as he doesn't want to give the Gabagoons any leeway as we saw what happened last game. Face off to the right of Rampage. One back by Booch out to Desi. Desi will hold. Feed it over to Geimer. Geimer dealt along back to Desi. Through the blue line and in. Booch has it. Sazi trying to generate a point for his team, but instead he'll draw the penalty. We'll get a trip, and Prodigy will go on the power play for the first time. Hey, you know what? That helps. Uh, if you're not putting them on the scoreboard, at least put them in the sin bin, right? That's exactly right, as Ethan will fight that along with Pogues. Booch will recover it, helping out his teammate. Now he's pushed up against the boards. Desi will have to go get that one at the half boards. He will. Magundas cuts off the angle. Sazi's got it. Pass intended for Pogues. Broken up nicely by Magundas and sent down the ice. Resetting the play. Passed out by Rampage. You'll love to see the goalie get active there in the man advantage. And he will with about a minute to go here in the power play. Second period action. one nothing. Prodigy is that rich shot, or slap shot rather. Rings and fires. Pogues looking for the one, two. Can't connect. He'll still get it. Backhand chance. Can't get that shot off either. Either. Ethan will clear that one along. Almost a delay of game. But a Ooh. weird bounce off the uh, uh, the stanchion, rather, stanchion. will uh, cause an, a defensive draw for, uh, for Gabagoons. That's a, a rarity you don't see every day. Yeah, the last time I remember that stanchion is when Chara put that guy into it and it was just game over. So, uh, <laughs> you know, they're the puck this time, thankfully. Slap shot there, deflected away. Rebound chance also staved. And here we are. Back to even strength. 5v5, 6v6 hockey for those who love Drew Goldfarb. I'll get that reference in there at least one per broadcast. Hope Drew's doing well. Loved working with him. Here we are. Muted. For Gabagoons, up to Ethan out, JLP. Across the blue line and in, hit off the puck. They're going to recover it still. Ethan swinging around, left circle, driving in down low. Good move. And rubbed off the puck by Geimer was Ethan. Will go back the other way. Sazi can't get a grab on it. He's got it a second time, now a third. Half boards out, Pogues. Pogues stop and turn in the high slot area. Couldn't get the shot on either. So this time, it's Gabagoons. Going to work here defensively to break up these passing attempts that are leading to no shots, but some possession time for Prodigy. The defense of Prodigy is just uncanning here. They're doing a great job as every man is back, making sure that uh, the Gabins can't get into the zone. As they know if they answer, they come back hard, Nick. Desi will make sure that doesn't happen. Deflection in front there by Geimer. That slap shot doesn't make its way onto net. Ethan will take it out the other way. Three on two if they hurry. Geimer out of position, but he'll make the hit on Ethan. Back trailing there, and that one's going to bounce off a rampage out to his front, but he'll swoop on it, step on it, and we'll get a whistle. And that, he just keeps doing what he needs to do. You know, you don't need to be fancy if you're rampage right now. You just need to make saves. Just hold it down for the boys. Face off to rampage's left. Draw there. Push win. Ethan's got it. Backhand chance. Oh, and a nice shot there. Trying to go far side. Geimer will deflect it off his stick. He went into the corner. Now left point. Muted. Right side shot in there. Whistles just past Rampage. Good slap shot looking for the tip. Didn't connect. Pressure still on. Gabagoon's got it, but not for long as Desi will alleviate the pressure. We'll come back the other way to Sazi now. Looking for the stretch pass in front. Try to slip that one past a couple of would-be defenders. And that one's rang clear by Gabagoons. Up the right side now. Two minutes left here in the second period. one nothing Prodigy and a best of three where Gabagoons did take the first game in overtime. Outstretched stick there by Geimer. We'll net that one free. And it's back out to Ethan. You'll hear his name a lot so far. As some may say in chat, he's goaded. Looking for a lane there. Driving it in. Good chance there by JLP. Getting Ethan on the trail and going for the shot instead. Still in now. Up against the goal. Trying to move that one aside. He will. Five seconds left here. Last just effort. JLP gets that one poked free. Out into the corner. JLP. One last chance. And no. Not going to happen as Prodigy hangs on. To that play and the lead, they will hold on one nothing at the end of two. A great job by them to weather the storm there as that was a close, wasn't it, Major? 
Yeah, very, very close. Gobbagoon's really got a lot of quality chances there in the last five minutes. Probably their most aggressive five minutes, at least from the offensive perspective that we've seen from them so far in this game. I would expect that to continue from them as we remember they had, I believe it was no shots coming into this period four and about two or three of them were really in that last minute and a half or so there. Prodigy, on the other hand, really didn't get a lot of opportunities. And we haven't talked much about the defense and the goaltending for both of these two sides so far. Both sides as defense and goaltending have been absolutely amazing, really doing a good job of limiting opportunities. And when those opportunities have come, both goalies have done a great job stopping them and making those big saves. Little things like that, the difference in what could be a 2-1 to -one win or 2-1 to -one loss. We saw the big save from Polo. We saw a few from Rampage right there. Those saves could be the difference in who wins or loses this game. Remember some of those saves at the end of this one, depending on who pulls this out. A much different game in game number two as period number three is on the way. And I'm very mad at myself that I've made it five and a half in-game periods without making a Yo Gabba Gabba reference. I do innately apologize to everyone on Gabba Goons on behalf of the entire Demetrio Media Group company. Uh, shame on me for not getting that pun in sooner. Here we are, though. Final frame of regulation of game number two. Can Gabagoons tie this up and push the needle, or will Prodigy force a Game 3? We'll find out in about 17 in-game minutes. Down right side there, muted with a shot on. And man, oh, that was Jordan. Scratch that as he was down low, pulled back, and went for the wrist shot. What a nice move there by the defenseman. I thought he was coming right out of the corner with that Nick. Is uh, I thought he was going to drive, but a, a great play. As they get another one, what a goal, Nick. What a goal indeed off the faceoff here. And the best part about NHL 22 is it happens so fast that you get a replay. I love the replays here. Uh, pushing the envelope. Oh, as we, I jinxed myself. I thought we were going to see that, but no, we didn't. Uh, that's okay. But man, off the draw after a great offensive effort by the defense of Gabagoons. Now we've got a tie game, Tegan. Yeah, and what a goal at that. And then these guys answer. Their resilience on the Gabagoons is phenomenal. And they, here they come again. They are hungry. Hungry indeed. Wraparound chance off the backhand. And that one almost did connect for another goal, but Rampage stayed with it and sent it along out in front for Prodigy to go back on the counterattack. They will. Geimer picks that one up way deep in the zone. He's got it. Wrist shot there from Polgs. Doesn't get through. Bounces off a of JLP. And coming back on that outstretched pass is Desi. Good stretch. Oh, that was a nice saucer that didn't connect. He was just a step behind. But, man, they're really trying to break out this defense and force Prodig or Gabagoon, sorry, to really work hard 180 feet of the ice. Yeah, it's almost seemed like Gabagoons have turned on the Jets and kind of started to play with speed, a little bit more like Prodigy style. Geimer using that bigger build, Desi having no problem, but it seemed that it's giving Prodigy a bit of a tough shake. As you saw the scoreline update there, Composure beating no, 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 Notorious to take a 2-0 series win and walk out of week one with an expected victory for that team looking for another championship under their belt. As we're about 10 minutes left here in regulation, tied up at one. Geimer will pick it up, give it out to Desi. They'll change positions, tipped in front. Good effort there by Boots to try to put that one past Polo, who's played outstanding so far through about 50 in-game minutes in game number two. Very different. Speaking of a different, uh, great slap shot in there. I was going to say a very different looking game from game number one. It definitely is, and it just seems that uh, Polo is dialed in, to be honest with you. Prodigy pr probably could have had a few goals, but Polo's been holding it down here for the Gabba boys. Desi, out now to Polk's. Pogues will slip that one in, but not for long as Ethan will turn it back the other way. And now JLP resetting, taking their time to make the best of this offensive opportunity. As they're looking to bring it over center. That's a third reset now. They'll try to slip through. Broke through the defense. Nice move there. Try to break up that trap as Prodigy plays that. Probably one of the best teams that play the trap really well, Tegan. 
Yeah, and, and both teams have actually showed it pretty well here, uh, Nick. Is I'm, I'm very impressed with both sides' defense as we saw the shots 4-5 to five last period. So it's been a very defensive hockey game. I'm, I'm one of the opinion that I love a good 2-1 to one game. And I know Great. that a lot of other people love the high-scoring games, but, man, when the defense and the goalies are looking sharp, you never know what the next goal is going to go in. It kind of gets you on the edge of your seat. I, I appreciate that as a soccer fan, as an old-school Devils uh, traditional hockey fan there, Tegan. Yeah, I, I can agree with you on one of those is I love a <laughs> high scoring hockey game. You lost me when you said soccer, but I'm a I'm a good old Western Canadian boy. But uh, here goes Pogues, Nick. Backhand chance from Pogues and that's saved by Polo. And that's one of the better ways that Pogues was able to get a shot on. But Polo made an even better save. And that's just what I've said is Polo has been fantastic. And so is Rampage. It's a game that me and you love. And we got a minute and 30 left and maybe more. Regulation hockey winding down real time. 60 seconds remain here as we close out regulation hockey. Loose puck in front. Polo holds on for another draw. He's just going to keep slowing things down. Yeah, and it's probably the smart play at this point. We saw Prodigy had to weather the storm at the end of the second. I think it's Gabagoon's turn. Face-off draw to the right of Polo. Step-up win. One up there. In front. Loose. Oh, and that one almost flipped in behind Polo. But no, he will hold on once more for the fourth consecutive draw in his end. All right. Yeah. Toronto? No, no good? No good. Okay, it is no good. That was very close. We had to go upstairs on that one there, Nick. That face-off win set play over to Booch. Booch couldn't get the shot on. Now behind the net. Pressure's now mounting. Prodigy going to work here. And finally clearing that off with about 50, uh, 40 seconds left. And that's going to be an icing. So we'll have yet another draw in the defensive end for Gabagoons. And they've got to get this one out. Nick, that's an interesting call there. It bounced out to the goalie. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that one. But nonetheless, the faceoff comes down. E-Toronto will do what E-Toronto does, Tegan. I can't help that. Fair enough. <laughs> Under a half minute left here to play in regulation hockey of game number two. Can Gabagoons close this out in two games or will we see a game number three? Ethan keeps that one in on side. Nice move there. JLP's got it. Final 15 seconds in the corner looking for a lane. Who's going to come get that? Oh, couldn't get there in time was Jordan. He pinched in just a little bit too much. They'll have to go back the other way and bring this back down the ice once more. Final rush here. Saucy's going to break that one up. Pass it out to Muted. He'll go back. Not going to take any chance here. And we will see another period of overtime. And just what we want is everybody loved free hockey. I got to send it over to my man Major for some analysis, but I got to get his opinion. Who do you think scoring from either side as well, Major? Man, this is a really tough one. With this being such a different style game in the defensive game, unlike that first one, there was a lot of fast pace, high octane opportunities. It's kind of hard to say who most definitely is going to get that one goal to make the difference. But really something that I am looking at, at least on the Prodigy side, something we've been used to seeing from the past. I know we've brought this up a few times. Cad has been one of those clutch players for them in this moment. We know about Poles. We know about Booch and what they can do in these situations where you really need a goal. I want to see if Sazi can make a play for them offensively. Would not be surprised if he maybe gets his nose in there. Also, watch out for Magundas. I think that he has been all over the ice offensively throughout both of these two games. Don't be shocked if he's the one that pots it in. If it is Gabagoons who takes this in and takes a 2-0 lead. I'd be remiss if I didn't expect Ethan to stand on his head yet again and do something heroic. Will we see that here? Time will tell. Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lighthouse, powered by League Gaming. Poles with a step on him. He's going to get rubbed off the puck as we're in another overtime session here. Game number two as we go offside early on here in this bonus hockey period. Poles almost had me out of my seat early. I thought we were going to see a quick one there. It only took six minutes in the last overtime period. I thought it was going to be a two-minute start, but we get some more free hockey, luckily. Everyone loves free hockey, especially when the game's really good. Here we go again with Pogues, and he's just putting the sprint button to work here on his thumbsticks. As Booch steps in, shot in, save! Good save there by Polo, keeping the game alive off the rebound opportunity. 
Polo is dialed in. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This man is buzzing on his own. The backpack is size triple XL, and Gundy scores! Gundy with the game winner steps in and delivers on the counterattack, and that's gonna do it as Gabagoons takes this one as well. I can't believe it. What a goal. Shooting from the outside in NHL 22 has worked so far, Major, and it works here in overtime for the Gabagoons. And how about the Gabagoons in that one? I mean... We, we we knew, we didn't really know how it was going to happen with the way that game was being played. We saw two completely different styles between game one and game two. Game one, so many high-octane chances. Play after play, you saw a lot of the forward connection from JLP and Magundas. You saw Desi and Poles connecting from that right D to that left wing spot. In this game, a little more methodical, more like a chess match, kind of slow, take your chances where you get them. And in games like that, that one cut, that one pass, that one save can be the difference. And we saw multiple big saves from Polo. Can you not agree that that was probably the difference in this one? I think that he is going to get a well-deserved round of applause from his fellow Gabagoon teammates. He's getting the hard hat. He's getting the belt. He's getting the game puck. It doesn't matter what you're giving this guy. You better give him everything under the sun if you want to keep winning in this tournament because there definitely could have been some goals scored by Prodigy there at Major, and he stood on his head. He was dialed in. I was saying he was wearing a triple XL backpack when Gundy took that shot and he scored. And well, the Gavagoons have to feel amazing after coming in with two huge wins against a statue team like Prodigy. Yeah, you kind of alluded to it there. Not only to start out 1-0, obviously, with the format of the series, having to win games to get a win in the standings, that is such a huge thing. It's not just one of those things where, oh, you got a game or two here, so that's going to count towards the stance. You have to consistently be able to beat teams. It's not just a one-off thing. Gabagoons yeah. not only able to win that first game against Prodigy, a team like that, but to follow it up and play with them stride for stride in that second game. Really, you can point things out from each level of the ice, whether it be the forwards, the defense, and the goaltending. Everyone stepped up and did what they need to do. A really complete effort for Gabagoons. Gabagoons and something that they're going to be smiling about and grinning widely at night going to bed thinking about a huge win against the Prodigy team that I think yeah. everyone would have thought was one of the favorites coming into the tournament. I can't. I don't know if I can hear the Gabagoons getting wild downstairs or my man Nick's coming back up the stairs, but here he is. What a game that was, Nick. You got to be impressed. Uh, wow. Just five saves from Rampage for Prodigy and they lose this game two to one. 11 saves for Polo, who stood on his head when the time mattered the most. I was sitting back here, Lime, while you guys were breaking down the game, and I was looking at the replay screen from the in-game feed, and that shot that came in from Magundas to close out the overtime period again for Gabagoons actually bounced off of a Prodigy's inside leg and then wow. beat Rampage 5-hole. Wow. So just... <laughs> It's the game of hockey, though, Nick. It's just that anything can happen. We saw a couple bounces go in off teammates. One that went off a stick to Magundas last game. And just like that, shoot the puck if you're an extra hockey. And if you haven't found out by this amazing broadcast, then you'll never know because it's shown tonight. Uh, Kangaroo Court drops to Paternity Test. And Paternity Test will win their series 2-0. Scoreline updates are coming in through the night, of course, and you're absolutely right there, Lime. Pucks on net, they teach that from the tiniest of tiniest of tiniest learn-to-play hockeys all the way through the professionals. I mean, you go back to some of the greatest teams that just couldn't get over the hump, and their biggest struggle was that one too many passes, their inability okay. to shoot. And, I mean, there is something to be said about not shooting when you don't have a lane, but if you've got an eye on the goalie, take the shot and good things can happen. And playing against a team like Prodigy, when you have, uh, Prodigy is defined. And to be honest, the Gabagoons had nothing to lose coming into this. They came in and got a first win. They said, guys, we already got a W. Who cares? Let's yep. come out and try and get another one. And they just did that. I think the stress of, uh, or the de-stress of not being able to worry and just go out and play their game. And I tip my cap to them because I know my Prodigy boys are having a tough one with those L's. But you Gabagoons deserve that. Great job, guys.
Yeah, absolutely. And obviously the MVP. I mean, you can look at the goal scorers that got the job done, but man, I think three or four big saves there on the 11 shots that Polo stopped really kept Gabagoons' confidence in the game, I think. And that that really can change the way you move the thumbsticks. Again, it's all about the kind of uh, going through the motions or doing something different. Those big saves allow you to do something different and really yeah. give your team the energy that they need to try something else on the next attack. Like, we're freaking out. I can't imagine, like, being in a party when your goaltender makes the saves like that and just the adrenaline that gets you guys going up. You know, when you're playing for money and in an esports scenario, things are different and the stakes are higher and the energy is at an all time high for these guys. This is a real thing. And, uh, and they're in for it. And it's fantastic to watch. It's high energy. It's exciting. And it's it's good hockey all around. What better way than to kick off season three of the Caps Gaming Showcase than with not only EU coming into the fold this morning and this afternoon, uh, Tegan, but then to have these two nail-biter games in the North American division to close out our first week coverage. Could, could it get any better? don't think it can you know i just think that we've seen all of it uh we've seen an own goal in the eu from all the way down to some massive hits here in na where we got to even see the different play styles of the calm more movement to the eu and then the running gun of the na and that's exactly what we love to see here at the caps gaming showcase are you ready for next week yet I'm born ready, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> well, we're going to do that. That's going to do it for us here. What an amazing, amazing week. Our opening week in the largest Caps Gaming Showcase we've had yet to date. Presented to you by Lightos and powered by Lee Gaming. We're going to get out of here. I want to thank everybody for their time and uh, watching us. We will be here Every single week, every step of the way, bringing you every goal that we can bring you on these featured matchups on behalf of the League Gaming staff, the Caps Gaming staff, MSC, Johnny, B Major, and Tegan, of course. My name is Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin. I wish you the best. I wish you the best of health. Stay safe, be well, and we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone.